And we're ready. I didn't want to start with it. Yeah, I'll go ahead. Yeah. All right. Thank you guys for tuning in to another episode of The Cigar Guys. We have a special guest today. We have Oliver Naval from uh, United Cigar Group. He is here to talk about United Cigars, obviously, and the stuff that they do. So thank you for joining us today. Right. So real quick, uh, what are you smoking right now? <laughs> uh, I jumped in on the United Toro Natural. Just a reblend we did and a reintroduction to the market. And uh, that was just a, a nice one to kick off the show with. Absolutely, yeah. So uh, I'm smoking the La Giana right now. I'm almost finished, so I have to light something else up. But I uh, wanted to start off with a lighter cigar here. Uh, Mark, what are you smoking? Yeah, I was smoking the Garofalo La Familia. Uh, it's my first time having this. It's pretty good so far. I'm almost done with a uh, firecracker, but I'm about to light up a Yaya Bagua in a few minutes, so I'm pretty excited about it. Yeah, oh, you guys are laying down the portfolio. I love it. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> which, yeah. Uh, wh- which, which Garofalo are you smoking? Uh, it looks like the Toro. Do you know? Um, is it a gold band? Uh, the orange oh, band. The orange band, yeah. The orange, all right, the sun grown. Yeah, that one's really good. I had that the other day. Um, But yeah, so we're smoking uh, cigars from United Cigar Group, obviously. And uh, we're going to enjoy those and talk more about them throughout the episode. Uh, But real quick, uh, Oliver, introduce us to how you got into the cigar initially. Give us your origin story. Jeez, this is going to date everything. It goes way back. Uh, I started smoking cigars um, really back when I was about 16. And um, and I'm 50 now, so you know, do the math. And I got into the industry just out of a, you know, really just a, a passion for it, um, a, a love of it. It had been in my family. My, um, you know, my my father had been around it, and he was in the hotel business. And um, it, we spent a lot of time with a gentleman that was at the time his, you know, his boss uh, Henry Sheline, who ended up. Uh, I think he, he co he co-wrote it was like a pamphlet and did a lot of cigar dinners in Boston and, and then out in California. Wrote one with uh, Richard Miola, who was the head of Lane Limited, which turned into Consolidated, which ended up turning into Altidus. So just a long history there. So that that just kind of you know I was all, I was just always around it um, and and fell in love with it. And I when I started smoking cigars, um, it, you know it was it was. A, a more expensive habit, obviously, uh, and I, yeah, I shouldn't even call it a habit because you know that's a term that I I hate hearing. But it was it, you know at the time when you're when you're a kid, you know you have friends that are smoking cigarettes or friends that are not. I was in sports, um, really didn't want to get into anything too heavy, but just being around it, I always just wanted to have a, a cigar. So then that led into you know my college years and my my first premium box that I I purchased was actually a box of Fiamos. And it was a ten count box. I don't, I don't know if you guys remember, remember that brand, but uh, that was a Mexican, Mexican brand at the time, and uh, that was that was my first, you know, like I said, premium box. And then after I finished up uh, college, I moved out to Las Vegas in '97, and in '98, um, I wanted to really just get a discount on cigars, so I looked uh, a company up, started working for them. And that turned into 14 years with uh, Fry Boy Tobacco out in Las Vegas. And, um, you know, we had about 12 retail locations wholesale. Uh, I was on the, they brought me in after about a year into the office uh, to do the, the marketing for them. Because that's what I graduated with. So I uh, started doing their marketing, web design, and that turned into more distribution. And, um, you know, with that, with them, we opened up uh, Rum Bar at the Mirage. We opened up Cafe Fuente at caesars uh and then we got into the more restaurants and and then i left them in about 2012 and then uh and then i was just out of the out of the business for a while i was in hospitality director of food and beverage uh general manager for a couple restaurants and um and just wanted to, originally coming back to massachusetts it was just hard to get into the business I, you know i had done the retail side i had done um you know the wholesale i had done you know some some you know, dabbled in manufacturing, but there was really nothing out here in mass for me to jump into. And then, uh, 2016 is when I linked up with United Cigars and saw this, this company that was in its infancy. Uh, it had started in 2009, but there was, there wasn't a lot, lot behind it, but there was a portfolio that was very extensive, uh, quality cars, 
uh, cigars that uh, that I never smoked, but were just you know absolutely beautiful. So I took the opportunity to jump on board, and, and now it's been uh, you know it's never ever it's just you know grown grown the company. Absolutely, yeah, and too when we uh, started looking into United Cigars more. And when you guys sent us some cigars, there was a lot of cigars in there that we didn't realize was a part of the United Cigar Group. And we had smoked them before, but we just never realized. And it's crazy to see now how big the portfolio is with this company. Um, but go ahead and to uh, as much as you can share, um, you know, the history of United Cigars, especially when you started and how it kind of expanded from there. Yeah, so United Cigar started in 2000 and, uh, 2009. It was United Cigar Group, and our website today is still United Cigar Group. But it was formed and started by uh, David Garofalo, who was really working to bring retailers together, find a way to, um, you know, to, to have cigars that, that were priced right, that weren't heavily discounted online, because it, you know, the, the Internet and the catalogs really started to, to make a big push. So he was trying to, to form this group and um, that kind of went to the, you know, went to the wayside, but there were still cigars that were in his portfolio that, uh, you know, were, were available to be sold nationally. La Giana is a brand that was named after his daughter that you know, started over 25 years ago. Uh, we're coming on, we're coming on 30 years. So, um, you know, when, when you look at, at everything that was formed with United and, and how it was trying to, to branch out and, and again, it actually, not again, but if, if you look at what United Cigars is, it, it originally formed in 1901 as as United Cigars, and it built up to over 3,000 retail locations. And then, um, and then it kind of yeah, it dissolved in the in the 60s, and and you know Dave picked it back up in uh, you know 2009, and and it started a, a company behind it, and really it started a brand be, before that uh, called United Cigars. So, um, you know, when you take everything. And, and look at it, then it was just, um, you know, after the, the United Cigar group kind of dissolved, where it was, you know, pitching to, to retailers and forming a group, uh, then it, it was just really a portfolio of, of cigars. And, and that's where that's where I stepped in. Um, in 2012, in the, with the portfolio of United, 2012, that's where United Cigars picked up the Atabay, Byron, Bandolero lines from Selected Tobacco. And um, and even even then, um, you know, there were there were a couple um, you know opportunities to 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 get in front of retailers, but it was really once a year. Selected Tobacco would have a booth at the the PCA show in Las Vegas, and um, and then and then that was it. There was no no sales force. So 2016, uh, you know, when I started, there was there was just a small amount of, of accounts, and um, you know, it's it's it's. It's humbling, but it's it's funny in a way to visit accounts or hear people talk about um, anything United, but in, in particular Atabay, where at the time it was not, not literally laughed out of shops, but you know laughed out of shops because it was it was a twenty thirty dollar cigar that they'd never heard of. Um, you know that space was held from what everyone was you know telling me that space was held by um, you know two. Two larger players, Padron and Davidoff, they're like, you know, this, you know, this will never work. Uh, you know, it's a cigar; it doesn't have a name. And you know, I took, you know, the ones that were were nice. We're, you know, we're still, you know, now now come around and we're working with today. The ones that weren't overly uh, friendly, then you know, maybe it's just not a harder account to to work with now. But um, but yeah, it's it was it was a long long road, but it's been six years and uh, it's it's all growing well. So what are, uh, what do your responsibilities look like as far as, uh, working for this organization? I know you're director of operations, uh, share a little insight on some of the things that you do in order to promote the brand. Yeah. Oh, wow. So, I mean, when you, again, United small company, we started it, um, 2016, I come on board and it's, it's Sam and I across from the desk, uh, from each other saying, you know, what, what can we do with this? And when I looked at it, um, again, I, I smoked the portfolio. I thought everything was, was quality. Everything was a good product. And there were some that I loved and some that, you know, were, were good and, and they, they fit. But there were some that obviously stood out more than others. And I was saying, when you're looking at, you know, the Adam and Byron, they, they stood out. But, you know, when I smoked the La Giana, I smoked the United. Um, there were some that needed some 
you know, what I felt was a reblend. There was some that needed some packaging updates, uh, and everything needed branding. So starting um, with the company was really rebranding and uh, looking at the United as a, as a whole, because that, that is a cigar line for us, but it's also our brand. So, um, you know, handled the, uh, you know, the, the redesign of, of United Cigars, and then we looked at La Giana to update, you know, that packaging. Uh, then we went, I went straight to Firecracker, and, um, because Firecracker was one that, that I thought was a, a you know, fantastic, fantastic cigar. Cigar. And, 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 and the great, great story behind it. Um, but we just needed to, you know, give it some love. So um, I remember sitting, I was in the Dominican, and I was just sketching stuff out. And, um, I'm a I'm a sailor, I'm a, a Norman Collins fan, but Sailor Jerry fan. So all these old, you know, traditional uh, Americana tattoos, and I was just sketching some stuff out, piercing stuff together. I gave that to our uh, printer out in the Dominican. They put the, the new packaging together and and then the uh, you know the firecracker was was reborn yeah uh, gave it a little little blend adjustment uh, the new in fact the new firecrackers now will have an open foot uh, I just felt like the, the closed foot um, the you know the tobacco felt a, it was drying out a little bit sooner so the perception was that it was it, it could be dry I gave a little bit of a bite so just even trimming that that's a simple simple thing but um, you know yeah. that was that was the adjustment so Really, on on a day to day, um, you know, it was, it was everything from production to design to the blending um, to the marketing, and uh, and since then we've you know now been fortunate enough to to get uh, about eight brokers, re- you know, representatives on the road, and uh, you know, we hired a, a marketing uh, person, uh, Dan Davison, and and then we just have uh, another assistant uh, of mine in the in the office to help with uh, the calls. Uh, the organization so it's uh been it's been good good growth over the last uh last six years very nice yeah it's it's really great to see that that company is expanding so rapidly yeah and, and i will say the firecracker is probably uh one of my favorite like real short smokes <clears throat> like if i'm on a quick run like i'll grab the firecracker yeah thank you thank you yeah and, and we just we just launched the the black bomb at the at the pca this year so that's a maduro wrapped firecracker and um so we have plans uh, on again it was just it was a passion for that 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 cigar it was only it was one one size but it was only one blend it was a, an ecuadorian habano wrapper um blend so that's what we just called the, the firecracker and I, I wanted to expand the expand the line so we have a couple things in in the works we've done a lot of you know, limited releases with the firecracker and that's kind of the, the fun part of it for retailers and, and consumers because you'll have something new in, in a, you know, told that you're familiar with it. You know, I said you're familiar with it, but we work with a different manufacturer. So, you know, this year we launched the All Saints, uh, St. Patrick's Day Firecracker, yep. uh, right at, uh, you know, St. Patrick's Day. We did the, the Rojas, we worked with Rojas, Noel Rojas on the, uh, the Elote Firecracker for Seco de Mayo. And then we did the big launch of the EBC Pledge uh, for, for the, the 4th, 4th of July. July. Nice. You guys have such a big, uh, extensive cigar line. Is it hard to keep track of everything? Uh, yeah, it's, I mean, it's a, it's a challenge. I think the big, the biggest challenge and, and it's all, you know, we, we try to do it on, you know, keep, uh, you know, keep things in order, but, um, you know, we do it on a, just on, on a full sheet. So if you, if you look at a, when, when you look at a, a box of cigars, you know, it's, it's more than just, Hey, you know, I, I want 10,000, um, you know, cigars made for this run, or I want you know twenty thousand, whatever, whatever the number is. But you have to look at the bands that are that are on the cigar that that we we print. Um, then you you have to have the boxes made. If there are any stickers on the outside of the box, stickers on the inside of the box, um, you know, UPC barcode. So you have to keep track of of everything that goes into the uh, the production of just one one box. And you know, when I say you know we the factory will keep track of it, but. Um, you know, there, there are times where it's, um, you know, we're, we're calling out the numbers and saying, Hey, we're going to run low. I don't know if we're going to have enough for this production. Can you guys double check? And, um, yeah, if, if, if we hadn't checked before the production goes in, um, you know, in, then you know, we'd be behind because we'd be short on, you know, whatever, whatever it might be. Yeah. So let's, um, talk about too, um, the United cigar line itself basically uh, what we would call your house blends 
Uh, I know there's a natural and a, and a Maduro. Um, so, and you said that those were one of the first ones that you guys started once you jumped on. That, that was, that was one, one of the first, first lines, lines that, that I wanted to work, work on. on. Okay. Because the, the, you know, the branding just, and, and you guys validated it by saying, we didn't know that these were part of the portfolio. So when, when you, you look at the firecracker now, it has a United coin on the back. Um, everything's kind of, you know, I'm switching everything to that direction. So there was new artwork that needed to be done. So that means if you're talking in the printer, there's new plates that have to be done for the die cut, uh, for the printing, for the embossing. Um, so there, you know, multiple steps, but United was the first one that, uh, you know, I wanted to work on just to, you know, keep, keep what it was when it originally started, but just kind of update it and, you know, liven up the, the colors and, um, you know, even, even now some of the, I don't want to say the older bands, but yeah, you know, with this, with this logo, um, at the top, there are, you know, the three stars. Well, now, now those will be in gold and they'll be embossed and, so it's just it's just an addition, just little little things like like that that we try to tie into everything. On the on the firecracker, you know, there's an eagle, and you know the firecracker just to me had, had strength and power. So you know I wanted to put the uh, you know this this big eagle on it, and then the talons um, you know are holding you know arrows, and then there's a, a big red anchor behind it, and that red anchor is just tying in not only to the you know that that Americana art you know traditional you know tattoo of uh, Norman Collins. But um, it was it was also tying it into a brand that we knew we were, we were going to come out with, which was Red Anchor, and we came out with that uh, a few years after. And so, you, so we try to have a story behind everything. Yeah. So you guys um, actually do all of the printing of the bands and stuff in house. You don't outsource that at all. Uh, I, no, I shouldn't say in house, but we send it to the printer in the Dominican. Okay. Yeah. Most, most of our stuff comes out of the uh, out of the Dominican. We have um, you know another another company that we do one one band production out of uh, out of Miami out of out of Florida. Very nice. But most of the stuff is yeah through someone else. You mentioned Red Anchor Line. I just had my first one just yesterday. It was phenomenal. You guys recently have released some new sizes. Can you can you like go over that or talk about that a little bit? Yeah, yeah. No, I'm glad you enjoyed it. That's uh, that was a project that we worked on with the Kellner family um, because the, the red anchor is a brand that's uh, it's over 250 years old. We launched it last year with only 250 boxes in one size, uh, the Admiral size, which is a Toro six by 52. So we worked with KBF uh, Kellner boutique factory and that's uh, uh, Hendrick jr. And you know, his father, uh, Anki, um, his family was originally from Holland. So, that was the you know the, the first family that we approached and we said we you know we want to work with you on this we want this to be you know part of part of you and who you are and and you know your heritage so you know we sat down we we worked you know talked about a a profile we were looking for and this was one of the one of the, I don't want to say easier projects to do when it comes to blending but um, but when you sit down with you know the, the Kellner family and and especially when you have a couple blends that have been made and you, you fall in love with one and then you have Hanky, uh, not only Andrew Jr. who is, who is making the cigars, but then you have the father, Hanky, who smokes it and says, this is, this is the blend. It's hard to say, no, we want to change it. And, um, you know, he was, he was pretty spot on as well. So that was an easier blend to, to kind of to finish on, on our end. Um, but it's a yeah, fantastic cigar. And, and then this year we just launched uh, the the Gunner, which is a six and a half by forty three. Uh, those will start shipping to retailers uh, beginning of September, end of this month. And the Captain, which is a five by fifty. So they all kind of have that that nautical, you know, nautical theme. Uh, we'll have the Commodore, which is a, a, a seven by by fifty, uh, coming out probably October, sometime. Very nice. Yeah, and I know you mentioned uh, already you know, the Atabay and the Byron. So uh, let's talk about uh, the cigars uh, from the Alfonso line. Yeah. So, you know, when you look at, when you look at premium cigars or, or, or not, not premium cigars, when you look at luxury items in general, you know, what, you know, what makes them luxury? Why should I pay more? What, you know, why is it deserving of that price? And that was always the first thing that I got um, when I would sit down with, you know, with anyone on it. And I was even the same one when I first, I mean, I was coming from Las Vegas where we were already higher priced. 
Um, you know, congratulations to Nevada for lowering their tobacco tax. All the retailers fought for that. Mm -hmm. They went down from 30% down to a cap of uh, 40 cents, I think. So that's a huge win for them. But, um, you know, so, so bringing it back to when I was there, we had a high tobacco tax. We were inside of casinos. Uh, we had a captured, uh, you know, captured audience that, that couldn't leave from the table sometimes. So even though we had 12 retail locations throughout the casinos, we also had cigarette hostess programs. And on those trays, on those cigarette hostess trays, we used to sell the Mac Mino Portofino for $20, which is still to this day offensive. Uh, it's, just a, it's a high price. But so I was coming from a market where I saw high price cigars, but even then, $12, $15, $20 was an expensive you know, cigar. So when I sat down and I, I first tried the Atabe, um, I was I was blown away. And then I, I just wanted to learn what makes it so different. And, you know, one thing I want to stress is the process makes it different. So if we take a cigar or, or anything, you close, we close our doors and we come back in five years, we can agree that everything in that room is five years old, right? Because it's five years have passed. And that's absolutely true. And in the market today, there are some cigars that are two years old, five years old, six years old, 15 year old tobacco, this and that. But that's just, that's just age. That's just time. Anything can happen in that time. Nelson Alfonso, who is the man behind Selected Tobacco, puts his cigars through an aging process. He has multiple steps. He shares just a little bit and allows us to share just a little bit um, because he doesn't want it to be, um, you know, copied in a way. But, I, you know, I kid with him. I said, I, I don't know if anybody's going to go through this this process the way you do because of the time and the effort that goes into one cigar. So when you look at, at the Atabe Byron Bandolero and the new Alfonso that came out, the Byron 1850, all of his cigars go through this aging process. And what that is is, yes, the tobacco's aged. It goes through extra fermentation. Um, the cigars are, are, are rolled in Costa Rica. And that's kind of where the, the real process starts. I should say the, you know, his fermentation style is, is a little bit different. And that's what he kind of keeps you know, a little bit secret. But the rolling process, his rollers, the bears down there only roll about 150 cigars per day, which is the, about a half, just for round numbers, about half of what a, a, a cigar uh, pair will roll in a day. So already you know, he wants to make sure that the quality is, um, is, is at, its, at its peak. Once the cigars are rolled, he ships cigars to Madrid where he's living and he has aging rooms there. And those aging rooms are much different than your typical aging room, or at least the aging room that, that I knew of. Uh, he uses five different cedars. So he used Cuban, Spanish, Mexican, Brazilian, and Lebanese cedars. And then for the first year, for any cigar that's rolled, for the first year, he'll put it into one aging room. And he'll bring humidity down, and then he'll bring it back up. So the cigar, when it when it, the humidity is brought down, it's shrinking. Right? Because it's, it's almost it's drying out. So it's purging any other impurities in the cigar. Then he'll increase the humidity. So when the cigar is breathing in all the different cedar notes, because the, the water droplets will go into the cedar, the cedar will clean the, the water, and then the you know the water and the, the vapors will come back in, and the cigar breathes in all those cedar notes when it goes back up to seventy plus. After that first year, um, when he feels that the cigars are ready, then he transfers all the cigars out to a separate room, and then they continue the aging process. So all the bandoleros uh, will kind of be in one room at a bay. Uh, Byron, and in those rooms, then they'll take on the different aging years. So Bandolero's aged uh, in that pro process for about one to two years. Byron, depending on the on the blend and the, the the century, will be aged anywhere from three to five years, and the Adam they will be aged for a minimum of five years post roll. So, if if you've experienced, if you smoked it, um, I don't know if you've noticed that on the on the palate, it's just very clean. And then even when you're done smoking, you're, you're left with this very clean palate where you, you're able to taste all the subtleties and all the characteristics of the cigar, but it doesn't have that, you know, that, that, that little bite of, well, I just, yeah, I just smoked the cigar. Uh, it's just incredibly clean. Right. And yeah, yeah. so we've smoked uh, the Atabe. Uh, it's been, you know, we started smoking the Atabe uh, probably about two or three years ago. And you're right. I think that age that's put on it it allows for a clean palate that aftertaste that you would get with some cigars is not there 
Um, and me personally, I smoke the Atabe quite often. I think my favorite was the Lancero size. And I, then I to agree. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then I kind of moved away from Atabe and then the Alfonso came out. And, you know, it's a $50 cigar. And I'm like, oh, you know, let me try it. And I, it's honestly my favorite lighter cigar, my favorite Connecticut, if you'd say. I absolutely love it. I love that there's like notes of cherry in there, at least for me. And it's honestly probably my favorite cigar from that line. Absolutely. Like without a doubt. So I try to get those as much as I can try to not pay full price for them, <laughs> but they're excellent cigars. And I'm actually, yeah. that's probably my favorite now from that line. Yeah. Uh, that, that Alfonso line when it came out, uh, or even when it was discussed because we saw it from Nelson, when he has these, these renderings and he's talking about the line and what he's doing because, again, when 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 these cigars are resting, he's able he has them done. They're all all the cigars are, are finished. They're resting and they're aging and they're going through this process. When he was talking about Alfonso and even the by eighteen fifty, and he's saying, "Well, it's going to be a, you know, it's 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 you know, the, this tobacco is a blend between Atabay and Byron, so it's a little, little you know, just a little bit stronger." And then he started using French oak in the in the aging rooms only for Alfonso and Byron eighteen fifty. So that added another layer of complexity. And um, I remember, you know, when he was, you know, like I said, when he was talking about it, we're like, how can it be better than, and I, I shouldn't even say that, like, it's not better than Atabay and Byron, but it was just, it's like another level. It's just a, a different experience. Um, you know, but then, yeah, we sat down, we smoked it, and, and I, I, I'm, I'm with you. It's, uh, it's just a, it's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful blend. Uh, so, yeah. so right now, what would you say is your personal favorite cigar that you guys produce? Um, yeah, I've been, I, I've, I've been smoking a lot of the red anchor lately because I just, I absolutely love it. It, re, it just reminds me of what, you know, a, a cigar, not what our cigar was, but it was just, there's this elegance about, you know, the red anchor that I, uh, that, that I really like. And the gunner, that size, the six and a half by 43 to me is, uh, is just fantastic. Yeah, I think to uh, a smaller ring gauge, I would say that my ideal size is between like uh, a 42 and a 50, but I love a good Lancero or a short Corona, something like that, because that smaller ring gauge just really brings the flavors together. So I'm actually really excited to try that size. Yeah. Yeah, and the Spiritus, um, the, that Lancero that you're talking about on Atabay, that that line of Atabay, you're looking at 12 different, sizes and they're all i feel like they're all very you know very unique there are some similarities when you get to like delirios ritos mysticos but that vary from from a 55 ring gauge to a 56 ring gauge but that even that slight variance like there, there's just something different but then when you go to the lancero the spiritus um i feel like the you know the, the strength picks up you can really taste the the wrapper there's no lajero in that that one by the way but it, uh, it, it's just it's a stronger stronger atabay so i'm uh yeah i'm a big fan of the uh the lancero as well when you're enjoying a cigar what's your personal drink of choice like for me it's whiskey but can you kind of go over how it complements or enhances mm -hmm. your cigar experience yeah so i i think that that's always a tricky question for me because every every palate's different um right i i look for things that are a little you know, a little more, a little more subtle. I've, I've been uh, drinking a lot of tequilas uh, lately. Casanoble has been a, uh, been a nice one to, to, to sip while I'm, I'm having a cigar. Um, so I look for something that, you know, sometimes maybe, uh, and on the tequilas, like the extra nails or the nails, uh, there's a, a viscosity to it, right? So it's, there's, it, it feel like it almost cleanses the palate, um, you know, for me, but, um, but if, if I'm doing a, uh, you know, if I'm, if I'm tasting blends or I'm sitting down at, you know, it's really a, a sparkling water or a, a tea, a lot like of green tea, tea at the office. office. No really coffee. Like that's a, a very, very easy going. What about coffee in the morning with one? Yeah. Coffee in the morning. Man, that's, that's just an incredibly good pairing. Especially an espresso. Um, it, it, yeah. Um, yeah. If the, if the espresso is done right. Sure. <laughs> yeah. You know, coffee, right. There's some bad, there's some bad espressos, and uh, and then there's some some great ones. So yeah, co coffee is a great compliment because it's just a uh, you know this this rich, uh, you know, 
there's a, a richness, uh, a robust taste. You're able to taste the, you know, earth and, um, you know, these, you just see these rich notes and the, the tobacco just, it, it complements, they, they sit well together. So coffee is, is just, uh, I don't want to say it's a, that's an, it, that, that's an easy one. That should be an easy one for everybody because that is a fantastic compliment. And when you, you know, you, you might add a little bit of, you know, if you're going, uh, you know, further, further south down to, you know, Florida, Miami, you know, the sugar levels kind of increase a, a little bit. So, mm-hmm. uh, you yeah, know, you got to watch that, you know, depending on what you're, what you're smoking. But, um, but yeah, coffee's coffee all day. Yeah. Like you said too, I mean, coffee should be easy because I think most people drink coffee, even if they're not cigar smokers. So that's a great thing to find out. It's like, Oh, I compare cigars with coffee. And a lot of cigar smokers like to hear that, especially when they're getting into it at first. Yeah. Yeah. Co- coffee is the easy one. Um, because, yeah, like I said, everyone has a different palate. I and mean, there are some people that just don't, don't drink. Um, sc- yeah, for me, scotches and whiskeys have kind of, I've kind of gone away from, um, is just again my palate. It just seemed like it opened up the the taste buds too much, or there was just there was just too much. They were sometimes they were they were fight almost fighting each other. Um, you know, if you, if you don't have to necessarily, or you don't want to concentrate on either one, um, and you just want to enjoy the night, then yeah, a whiskey, a scotch, fantastic, and, and same with tequilas. But um, you know, in a way. We've gotten away. I've been smoking cigars so long. We've we've gotten away from like what a cigar was meant to do, and you know why did you get into it? What was the purpose? purpose? It was it was to enjoy that that hour plus, right? Right. To To escape. escape. And the more the more we we sit there, um, you know, and and think about oh, you know, what are the flavor notes that I'm supposed to um, to to get? get? What are the you know, what are the tobaccos? What you know, if you do your research on the cigar before and you know that it's you know it's got um you know whatever just to keep it keep it simple dominican you know nicaraguan has a, a ecuadorian habano wrapper um okay i know these are the these are the tobaccos used but there it's it's meant to bring you together because it is a way to unite everything around you um if it's if it's a time that you're sitting there and smoking by yourself you're united with that cigar. You're, you're sitting there and you're, you're escaping in, you know, that, that moment. Right. And if you're sitting down with other people, you have to escape in that moment. So, um, yeah, I think we, you know, sometimes we just overthink the whole smoking process and, and a cigar, a cigar is a cigar. And that's mm-hmm. a, that's a, that's a great quote from, I'll, I'll give credit. You won't even know it. You won't remember it, but that's George Padron. Uh, when I was on the, on the retail side, in Las Vegas, we had this one customer that would come in and he would just pick every single thing from like, uh, you know, cigar aficionado and say, oh, well, I'm looking for a black cherry, leathery, you know, woody, cedary, you know, cigar. And, and he would just do this to us constantly. And we're like, Dude, all right, we'll try this one, try this one. And George, you know, George was there doing an event and this guy tried it with him. He's like, I'm looking for the black cherry, leathery, you know, whatever, strawberry, banana, vanilla, whatever. <laughs> and George was just like, man, it's just a cigar. <laughs> yeah. And I just like, stopped. And I thought it was, it was brilliant. It was like the easiest thing to say, but it was, I, yeah, hundred percent right. Um, you know, light up, smoke it, enjoy it. And, and whatever, look, if you want a glass of milk, <laughs> with it, <laughs> not, that might be too much, that might be too much coating of the palate, but yeah. Um, you know, grab, grab what you love. It's, uh, yeah, I, I guess the, the long way around that, the, that was the answer. But, um, uh, I, for me, I've been drinking, you know, a lot of a lot of different tequilas. Mm-hmm. You know, if I if I'm drinking a spirit, yeah, yeah, I think right too. Sam, Sam Summer. I think too. Um, tequila is becoming more popular among cigar smokers, especially with uh, companies like Casa Nineteen Ten that are promoting pairing their cigars with tequila, and people are starting to realize that there's actually a lot of great tequilas out there, like different añejos and stuff like that. Uh, and you know, tequila is not just for shooting when you're trying to get drunk, but there's actually yeah. a lot of tequilas that you could sit down and enjoy either by themselves or with your cigar. And two, like you said, I mean, at the end of the day, the cigar that you are smoking, you should be enjoying it and not specifically maybe going after like, oh, certain flavor notes. Because sometimes you go after those flavor notes and the cigar that you recommended might not taste good to you. So at the end of the day, you got to find, you know, different cigars that you just enjoy. And even 
you know, you'll enjoy cigars that have flavor notes that you maybe typically don't go after, but the cigar itself is just so good that you can sit back, relax, and enjoy that one. Yeah, and sometimes, look, sometimes the experience or the environment is the best pairing for that cigar. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right? because you might be on a golf course, or you know, you're you're sitting there at a you know, at a wedding, or you're you know, you're with you're with friends, and you're you know, it was it was some guy, yeah, you know, it, it was it might have been your first cigar, and you're you know, your friends introducing you to the cigar, or, or your father, or your you know, your uncle, or or whoever, but they're introducing you to the cigar, and it's that experience becomes the best pairing for it because it makes that cigar phenomenal, and then as as you 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 grow, or maybe even the next week you're trying to smoke it again and it's just nothing like what you, what you remember. So that just means that the, you know, the environment that you're smoking in enhances the experience. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'll tell you this too. And sure. Mark will attest to that. Um, you know, there's been times where he's had a certain cigar and he was like, Oh my God, the cigar was amazing. I have to try it again. And the next time he tries it, he's like, man, the cigar tastes terrible. Yeah. And mm-hmm. it turns out that, he had that cigar when he was having a great time. He was out with friends. Yep, I was at a bachelor party. A bachelor party. And then that, <laughs> yeah. like you said, the experience uh, made the the cigar taste that much better. And then when you sit down and have that cigar, you're like, oh, man, what am I like? Why does it taste so bad? What am I missing here? <laughs> so you're exactly right. The, the experience will definitely impact how you enjoy certain cigars. Absolutely. Yeah, 100%. 100%. Yeah, so is there a specific moment or uh experience for uh that you have experienced as united in the cigar industry uh i think (laughs) what so what is what is there an experience that you had that was kind of like your turning point in the industry maybe it's something that made you feel like you know wow this is what this is what i want to do for the rest of my life whether it was with united or before united because i know you're in the industry for a long time uh, but is there is there a moment that you can pinpoint that you remember saying, "Wow, like this is something I'm really passionate about. This is something that I want to do." Um, yeah, you know, there. I mean, there there are, there are several just you know points that that kind of kind of hit. Uh, but I guess if I if I you know take it back, you, you know, you, you said you've been in the industry for a long time, and now I'm I'm thinking back. So that made me think about. Uh, I think my it was my first trip in when I was in the business. Um, to the Dominican, it might have been ninety, it might have been ninety nine, and we, I, I, I was able to sit down and spend a day with, um, with with Carlito, and it was it was myself, um, you know, the owner of uh, Fry Boy Tobacco, Michael Fry, and then you know, the buyer. So it was the three of them. We spent an entire day going from the field uh, to the factory, to, you know, sitting down having lunch and. You know, he's driving us around. We're we're just talking. It's very you know very personal, very intimate. We're in the you know in the barns, and um, at, at that moment, it, because prior to that, you know, you I saw everything, and I smoked cigars, and I and I loved it, but I had never really been to, um, you know, the 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 factory at that point. I mean, I was, you know, I was in my in my whatever mid mid twenties at the time, so I'd never been to had that experience, and I and. I don't know if, I mean, I think factories still had, had tours and they allowed people in, mm-hmm. but I don't know if it was as, as heavy of a, you know, marketing tool as it is today. Um, so, you know, that experience, um, you know, and that, and that trip on that trip alone, you know, I sat with, uh, with little Gomez and that's what I had first been introduced to, to Ochi Blanco. Um, you know, so, so that, that trip kind of opened my eyes to everything. I was like, wow, this is, I never thought I would be in the cigar business. I graduated with a marketing degree, uh, um, you know, from the East Coast, which, you know, yes, there were shops, but, you know, these were the old dingy shops. They weren't like the, the lounges that we see today. Um, you know, like, you know, a couple of our, we have the, we have the first in, in Frisco, Texas, we have the Atabe Cigar Lounge with industrial cigars. And then we have the Byron Cigar Lounge in, in Schaumburg. And when you look at those lounges, if I had those back then, I mean, now you see like, wow, this is, you know, this is, you know, people are really into this. People are, are, you know, investing a lot of money on, on the retail side and, and they're giving this experience to their, their consumers. You know, yeah, this is something that you can, you can make a living out of. But when I first started, it was, I don't want to call it a side gig, but it was, it was a side gig. It was a side hustle. It was, 
um, you know, a couple hours, I, I, I went into the interview and I told him, yeah, I can't work weekends, I can't work nights, only because I was young and I, I'm in Vegas. And I'm not working those hours. <laughs> so, but, but I had I had this passion for, for cigars and I had knowledge, so I'm coming in. And they're like, oh, no, you actually have, uh, um, you, know, you, you know what you're talking about, you're, you know, you're passionate about it, we want to we want to bring you on and we'll see what it what can develop from there. But, um, but yeah, I think, I think that, that first trip, when I said 90, it must've been 99. I don't think it was 98, but it might've been fall in 98, but either, either way, like that, that first trip really, uh, opened my eyes to, to everything that was, that was possible. Yeah. I'll tell you what, we had a, a conversation recently with, uh, Z from Cordoba Morales and that conversation came up and he said, you know, basically if you're, especially when you're first getting into the cigar industry, uh, if making money is what you're, you're, what you're going after, you're in the wrong industry. Uh, you got to start out with passion and the one, you know, you want to be able to do it. Um, because especially if you're starting a new brand or something like that, the money's not going to be there for a while. You, you got to grind for mm-hmm. it for sure. Oh uh, yeah. hundred, hundred percent. You can, you can come into the business with money. Right. <laughs> but, <laughs> well, and, yeah. and that topic might, came up as well. Not leave yeah. money. That topic came up as well. There's a certain brand that we talked about where, you know, a uh, guy was very, very well off and was able yep. to start, you know, 20 lines of cigars right off the bat. And that's great. Uh, but for I think most people, you know, especially building a brand from the ground up, uh, if you don't have, you know, millions or billions of dollars to throw into it, then it's definitely going to be a grind and it's definitely going to be a climb up that ladder. Yeah, for, for sure. And I think, uh, you know, now, you know, the the cigar smokers consumers they're you know we're we're so much more educated than than before um there were books out before and there you know there's some great great books out there that you know helped me start but but now you have access to everything you know right on your phone mm-hmm. so you can look up the you look up the cigar the company um the, the store behind it so we're much more educated and that means that you know if some some brand or uh, you know, a company comes into market and, you know, they're, yeah, they're throwing money or they're, they're doing what, you know, whatever. And, and they got all these crazy promos and they're giving stuff away and, you know, they're getting into consumer hands in the end. If it's not a, a good product and it's not consistent, it's not going to, it's not going to last we'll see a few years and then they'll just, they'll phase out. I mean, just look at, look at the history of cigars, even the cigar boom, you know, way back when, um, you know, in the early nineties, uh, you know, there, there are brands that you can, look up now that are just no longer around that were that were bangers back then they were top you know top brands but they just you know didn't for whatever reason just didn't uh didn't make it through yeah especially i mean you said it especially today with so much competition at the end of the day if the uh, the product is not good quality people just you know they're not going to go for it so in today's culture in the cigar culture you definitely have to have a product that is top of the line that people are going to enjoy or else you might just get, you know, squeezed out by all these other guys, new guys that are coming in or just, you know, big companies that are producing a lot of great stuff all the time. Yeah. I, I think for the, for the most part, and I'm, you know, this is, you know, one thing that, you know, I teach, I teach my kids um, and that I live by you stay, stay humble because this, this industry and, and life in general can just take everything away from you mm-hmm. in, in, a, in, in just a, a, a flash so stay humble and stay true to, to true to your brand, true to what your company is and what you want it to be. And it may be a slower path, um, but it will it, it will be a stronger foundation for for the future. And and that's um, you know that, that was what I believed for United Cigars. I wasn't looking to you know just be this you know overnight sensation. I wanted I wanted this to be my not as I don't want to say my you know my last stop, but I want to grow with the company. I want to see the company grow. I want to, I want to, I want this to be, um, you know, where, you know, hopefully where I, where I end my, my career. Mm-hmm. Um, exactly. and I've seen all the mm-hmm. growth and all the, you know, all the changes and, and, you know, they've given me the opportunity to kind of have, have free reign. Obviously I, you know, I'm, I have to, I have to get the okay when, when I'm spending a lot of money, but, uh, <laughs> but if it, if I can justify it and I have it make sense and then, um, you know, I follow through and, um, you know, there's, there's success behind it. Then, uh, you know, I have, I have the support. So exactly. yeah, it's, it's a, it's a crazy industry. In your opinion, um, how does like cigar culture in different regions influence and, in, you know, preferences and certain cigar profiles? 
Wow. Yeah, I think, well, yeah, I mean, there are different, um, so different regions have different, um, you know, there's, there's different climates, right? So, and, and different, um, different lifestyles and, um, the, you know, different, different nightlife, different, um, you know, different jobs and, and everything. So you go to all these different regions and we'll see, uh, you know, I'll, I'll see some cigars that are very successful, even, even our, our brand, I'll just say, you know, our brand that can be successful in, in one region. And then in another region, it's just, it's a slower, slower move or, you know, even a shop. I mean, there it's not, it's not only regions. I mean, there are some shops um, that, you know, one will be five miles down the street. And I've, I've actually purchased cigars that I love that are not in our, our portfolio, but that I saw in a discount bin, um, you know, in a, in a shop that was, you know, miles down the road from somewhere else that it was very successful. It's, um, it, it I, I don't know. I would, uh, you know, to answer that, I guess, I guess it's, it's a little, it's a little hard to say, you know, if, if there was just a black and white, you know, uh, handbook to say, this is what works. Uh, I think we'd all be successful, but they're just, mm-hmm. There's just no no rhyme or reason for for a lot of things. Uh, you know, again, fall back to you know staying humble and 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 sticking with you know what what you believe, and then and then it will grow. Because I've you know we've as United we've we've uh, I don't want to you know, sound negative, but we proved some retailers wrong because they you know, they didn't want to give it a chance. It wasn't a name that people were kicking down the doors for. Um, you know, so that means that they'll have to they'll, they'll have to do a little bit of work to get it into the hands of consumers, but. Once we do that, and once they, you know, they, they accept us into the store, they put us on the shelf. We do a small event, and even if it's a cut and lighter, um, yeah, you know, I've done these. Uh, in fact, on Friday, I'm going up to Queensbury, New York, uh, to Queensbury Pipe and Cigar, and we're doing a. It's called a meet and greet, but I wanted to take away the M E E T, and I made it M E A T, so it's a meet and greet. So we're cooking up, and and the raffle items will be. Um, you know, steaks and, and, you know, packs of bacon and things like that. But, you know, when you buy a box, you're going to get a steak and a potato and then another cut of, of meat. And um, so it just kind of makes it entertaining. So, yeah, I mean, every, yeah, every region is just different. But even within the regions, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's, it, it's hard to say what, uh, you know, what's successful and, and what isn't. Yeah, that's a good idea. I mean, if you're serving food, you know, people are coming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and if you make it, you know, you make it fun. I think you know again the the industry when you when you look at it as a whole there, I don't know maybe there are other industries that do this but we've kind of taken cigars that are uh, an artistry and um, you know there's so much time from the moment that the the seed is planted to the time that the cigar is cut. There's so much time there, but then we take the cigar on the shelf and we say, oh, all right, well I'm going to buy three. What do I get free with that? I want a hat. I want a cutter. I want a lighter. I want I want this. I want that. I want a discount. What do you, you know? Oh, if I'm buying a box. I'm not gonna you know. I'm not gonna buy it unless there's a discount. I'm gonna go to this this store. They give me X amount off, or I'm gonna go online, or I'm gonna go to this catalog because I can get it for this price. You know, you, you don't go into a restaurant and order a steak, and then say, you know, what do, what do I get for free? Do I get you know? Am I getting my bourbon for free? No, it's it's about the experience, and, and you're appreciating what that what that is. Um, you know what you're buying. But cigars, I think we've, you know, we've, we're looking for what's, you know, what, what's, what's, what's the handout with it. Um, but it's, um, yeah, it's, it's, so, so I try to do, you know, with United, we try to do things that are, you know, maybe a little different because we don't have the budget of, you know, some of these larger companies. So, um, you know, this meet and greet is, is great because everyone, you know, to your point, they're getting, they're getting a meal. We're asking them to do something, but yeah, we'll give you a meal so that we can, we can sit down, we can have a meal together, we can share a cigar together. And, um, and, and, you know, enjoy that experience. So that, that night is, uh, you know, it's a fun night. Yeah. And we've said this uh, many times before, and you kind of said it yourself, um, especially if either the blender or the owner or someone like you um, is there at the lounge, hanging out with everyone, talking to everyone, smoking cigars with you, that in itself is kind of a plus for consumers because they get to talk to you and they get to build a relationship with you. And I think that that a lot of times is also very important when they're thinking about what cigar they want to pick, what cigar they want to smoke. They say, oh, well, I like this company. And then they think about the time that they met you and how it was a great time. And that kind of goes back to the experience is, you know, a really good pairing for specific cigars. Yeah. 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 hundred percent. And, um, and I'm looking forward to, 
like even sharing the the United, you know, our new blend for United, like this, the United is the first one that I can say, you know, I I took you know hands on approach to to blending because there's a fine line between you know somebody that's blending a cigar to somebody that's sampling, you know, blended cigars and let's see, you know, do we want A, B, or C? Um, so you know, United with the new United blend, like I was you know digging into bales and it took about a year and a half. Um, to to get the percentages right, uh, you know, of what we're using, and um, you know, I tried the Dominican Broadleaf um, for the first time there, and I wanted I wanted to use it in the in the filler, and then you know, tobacco from the Quisqueya region, and then it was it was how am I gonna you know now adjust the the percentages to make it so f- for what I wanted for my palate, I wanted something that was medium bodied but not overly spicy, um, you know, to take away because again. I'm a, I love food, so I go back to food a lot. Um, if I have a steak, I don't want to throw a bunch of Tabasco on it, mm-hmm. right? I want to taste the tobacco. So sometimes the cigar is either, but it can be under fermented, and and some people consider that strength because they don't understand that that under fermentation, that strength comes from those ammonias and it's in the back of the throat, and it's just it's, it's overpowering, but it's not it's not a good overpowering. Um, so. I wanted to. Uh, I just wanted to have something where I could I could taste these tobaccos that uh, that I really enjoyed, and, and that's the uh, that's a United blend. Absolutely. So, where do you see United Cigar Group in the next five years? Uh, yeah, next five. I just want. I, I, I'm. I, I wanted to see as like a, a, just a household name that we're we're in the pool uh, with everybody because we've been, you know, there. Guys and and you know a lot of the boutique companies that have been in the pool and we've kind of been on the on the outside. It's like it's okay, all right, kids out of the pool. It's adult swim, and you know we're the we're the kids on the side of the pool. So, um, you know we're we're gradually getting closer to the edge, and um, you know hopefully one day people uh, you know put us in the same you know same pool as uh, you know some of some of the big guys out there, and you know we're just uh, again just staying humble and, and and working our way there. Of course, I can see that happening too. I think that. This company in particular can definitely go the distance and, you know, make its mark in the industry. Absolutely. From what I've seen and the cigars that we've smoked, I think it's definitely possible. But again, like you said, staying humble is the biggest thing, especially in this industry. Because if you're you're too cocky, that pushes away a lot of people, too. It, 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 it does. does. And, but, 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 but there, there, are, there are, are some that are overly cocky and there, um, you know, there are some that are, you know, a little... Um, you know, a little more, a little more edge and maybe, you know, negative and it seems to attract some too. So that's what I mean. If you're, if you're just a, a you know, an ang- maybe an angrier person or you see that, you know, more negative than in the positive in life. But if that's who you are, then just be that person mm-hmm. and people, the people will gravitate towards it because you're, you're, you're true to yourself and you're true to the brand. And, um, you know, look, we all, we all have family members or friends and it's like that, you know, that one guy that's in your friend group, like, Whatever fucking gym, yeah, he's doing it again. <laughs> but he's still part of the friend group. But right. because you know that that's, that's just that's just him. him. Like, like that's just that's who, who he is. is. But but he's, he's part, part of the friend. So as long as you stay, stay true, true, and uh, you know, you're, you're just, just not, not burning burning, uh, burning bridges, bridges then, then it'll be good. Absolutely, absolutely. So hey, we're gonna wrap it up here soon. Uh, I appreciate you for joining us. I appreciate you for sharing your story and all the insight on the cigar industry. Um, but Again, thank you guys for tuning in to another episode of the Cigar Guys podcast. Be sure to check out United Cigars. We're going to put their link in the description. You can go check out all their great lines over there. Make sure you subscribe to the podcast so you can stay updated with when we upload new episodes. Go to our link tree as well. We have a lot of short content on our social media, including some of the United Cigars on there. So go check it out. But again, thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you guys next time. Yeah. See you guys. See you. Thank you. I appreciate it, man. Thank you.